Hello, all the readers from Dark Scene Magazine. Well, I mean, obviously, there's some things on this album that are like really old riffs, you know, that I've had since after the Victims of Deception album that was just dormant. Some other stuff is, you know, newer, so it's a combination. Obviously, the stuff that Craig has written, you know, is newer riffs too. So uh, it's just a combination of old and new, and you know, a little bit of everything, kind of, you know, and. Um, as far as the lyrics, you know, it's like with Dave, I have no idea what he writes. And I mean, sure, we sit down and then go over it, and I'm like, nah. I'm more, you know, into working with him on melodies for the songs. That's, you know, the biggest input. But as far as the lyrics, I mean, it's just, you know, he tells me the stuff, song idea, you know, and if, if I like it, I'm going to just go with it, you know. Because personally, I don't like writ you know, writing lyrics like Dave. On Victims, I mean, I wrote a lot of lyrics for that one, you know, this one, it was more Dave. Is it just, I mean, I personally, honestly hate writing lyrics. So if I don't have to, I'm really happy, you know, just sticking with the music aspect of it, you know. To me, it's like, I don't care, you can have the most brilliant lyrics in the world. I can read them, but if I don't like the music, I'm not going to listen to it, you know. I mean, that's why it's called music. If I want poetry, you know, I'm going to sit down and read poetry, you know, that's good poetry. So, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, obviously, I mean, you want to have some, you know, good lyrics, but I just don't pay attention to it. To me, the music is the number one thing, you know, so if you hear it, I mean, it could be in another language that you don't understand, but if the song is good, you will listen to it, you know. <laughs> said that those those are the two shows were like kind of the stepping stone to the full reunion you know at first it was just you know a benefit for Chuck it was a good thing to do so we're like yeah sure it's a one-off show you know uh, so we decided of course we're gonna do that you know just for fun and then from then on it was kind of like well you guys want to play Vakin you know maybe one more show it would be like a special thing you know so we agreed to do that, and by the time, by you know, the time we played Vakin, we kind of sat down and, you know, and just looked at each other and was like, you know, it's kind of fun again, you know. So maybe we should just take it a little bit further, you know, and see what happens. So yeah, you know, that's that's what happened. Those two shows were the stepping stone to the full reunion, you know, and the actual making of the album. And then you know, so we recorded a demo. And uh, it wasn't like back in the 80s to where we recorded the demo and we weren't even shopping it around. And then there was like, you know, all these labels are calling us, wanting to sign and offering all this money, you know. So this time around it was a little bit tougher, you know. It's like, it seemed like all the fans were really freaking out about the demo. And even, even the fans from like the record labels, you know, they said, wow, I was... It's one of the greatest demos, you know, in a long time, and this and that, but we don't know how it's going to do, so I can't sign you to the label, you know. So it was a lot tougher to find the right deal, you know. So that's why, you know, we weren't just sitting around from 2005 to, two, you know, 2010 and doing not doing anything. It was just trying to find the deal, and it was a lot harder, but, you know, finally kind of went with the best we could get at that time, you know. What I'm doing, you know, people say, well, what do you enjoy more? And it's like, you know, it's kind of, sure, both bands are Bay Area bands, but, you know, you kind of get different things from playing the music like Exodus is just you get more of the aggression you know it's a friendly violent fun you know to create complete chaos 
Or with heathen, it's a little more musical, you know, you enjoy playing more harmonies and more melody, you know. So I kind of get the best of both worlds, you know. Exodus and Heathen is a lot closer together under the surface, you know. I mean, when I, in fact, you know, when I formed Heathen, the whole formula was I want a band that sounds like Exodus just with more harmonies, maybe more Thin Lizzy thrown in, more, you know, Iron Maiden thrown in into it, you know, with vocalists that could sing, you know, not the screamer, you know. So that's what I said. Underneath the riffs, they're pretty. You know, it, it could go either way. It's just what you lay on top of it kind of changes where you go. It's like the you know you throw in a little more melody and more harmonies on top, and there you have heathen, or you just stay with more basic like meat and potatoes, you know, and you got Exodus, you know. So yeah, I don't think about it, you know. It's like well, the riff comes and like for example the riff on. Uh, you know, it started out on the, the ballad of uh, Leonard and Charles for Exodus. That was originally, ex you know, heathen riff, you know. And then Gary just talked me into, he's like, come on, you gotta, let's do this riff for Exodus. I'm like, oh, okay, you know. Yes, Gary Hall, begging on his knees. <laughs> So it kind of went that way, you know. I mean, if it would be a heathen riff, there'd probably be more harmonies and this and that, you know. And then nobody would know that that was like for Exodus. <laughs> Exodus, I mean, luckily, you know, bring in, in enough money to where, yeah, I don't have to have a job. You know, now Heathen is like a bonus. You know, I'm trying to get Heathen to the level where Exodus is, you know. The other guys, I mean, they all have jobs. I mean, uh, you know, like Dave and um, Dave, like, works at, I'm not even exactly sure what they do. <laughs> no, Dave works, like, at the pool with the kids, you know, so teaching swimming lessons and, you know, um, Darren at the moment is actually looking for a job, you know, he's like, uh, I think he went through like a police academy and he's a, he's a cop in the van, but unemployed one. So everybody, yeah, they, they have their jobs, you know, on the side. I mean, you gotta pay the bills. If the music doesn't pay the bills, you know, it's, it was a lot easier back in the 80s when we all lived, you know, with our parents and, you know, never had a care in the world and the band was the only thing you, you know you could do but now I mean you have families you have bills to pay so you know it's the same way with the fans they're always asking why aren't you touring more why aren't you doing this and you know it's like because we don't have as much time to dedicate to the band you know only because you hate to say it to or or you're only doing it for the money but if it doesn't you know pay your bills you can't do it, you know. You're not 18 years old anymore. So unfortunately, it, it does become, you know, like comes down to the to money. You know, nobody's asking like, oh, we want to do this and become millionaires and be greedy. But it would be nice just to ne not worry about paying bills at home while you're on tour. You know. So, I mean, essentially, yes, yeah, sure. Everybody always says, oh, it's all about the music, but it's not. You know, it is. It is, you, you got to make a living. If you would go to your job and say, I love my, my job so much, I don't need to get paid for it, then, then what would happen, you know? You can't, you, you can't go to the store and go, you don't understand. I mean, I love my job so much, can I have all the free food? You know, nobody's going to do that. So unless everything else is free, you need the money. You know? Obviously, I mean, you see, you know, the record companies going under and, you know, the music shops, you know, the record stores closing down, you know, like, I mean, when you have, like, in, in America, one of the biggest, you know, record stores declaring bank bankruptcy, you know, something's going on, you know. 
I mean, I have a, you know, it's like, sure, with all the illegal downloading, I know a lot of musicians complain about it, that, you know, it takes the money out of their pocket and, and how horrible it is. And I see that point, but I also see the benefit to where a lot more people are being exposed, you know, maybe illegally, but still exposed. You don't know how many, you know, if you, if you sell 40, 50,000 albums, you could have 250,000 downloads and those people as long as they come out to the show and see you you know then I mean it, it creates more of a it's just easier to get your music you know out there to the fans because I remember back in the day we used to trade tapes you know so I would have like friends in Europe you know that I would send them a tape it, it would take two weeks to get there you know and then by the time I get their tape you know it takes now it's just mp3 you, you send it in the email and and it's that much faster to just, you know, and then he sends it to somebody else and so on. So there are definitely benefits for, especially for metal bands, you know, to spread that music, you know. But record companies, yeah, they're really hating it and, yeah, a lot more, you know, because that's so much money being stolen from them, basically. I mean, it's like Metallica, I mean, the difference between, it's like, okay, we didn't sell 10 million records, we sold four. You know, it still doesn't hurt them. They're still making a lot of, you know, money on it. And, you know, they're not hurting. But for the for the bands that used to sell 50 or 100,000, and now they're down to 50 or 25,000, but it's the same amount of people coming out to the shows. You know, that, that hurts them in the sales, sure. Everybody, bands and promoters and record companies, they're going to hit you somewhere else. They're going to take it out. If maybe you stole, you know, the CD, got it for free, you know, that you would have paid whatever, 16, 17 euros, I guess, you know, how, how much it is up here. I mean, you know, so you got away, you saved yourself 17, 18 dollars, but maybe, you know, then you go to the show and the tickets is going to be a lot more expensive and the merch is going to be a lot more expensive, you know. So somewhere they're going to get you, you know. I remember, you know, paying ten dollars to see Judas Priest in the arena and then I turned around and somebody told me, it's like, you know, Iron Maiden's coming and the tickets are like a hundred dollars. I'm like, a hundred dollars? Where have I been? What happened? You know, and that's what happened. I mean, it's just record companies and bands and management and lawyers, I mean, it's a business, so they're gonna try to squeeze you somewhere else.